So, Ray, do you want to give us your top five Bond films just to kick us off? Yeah, so this will come as no surprise, but Casino Royale is my first. Uh, I think that's the best one. I think it reinvigorated the franchise. Uh, A View to Kill is my second favorite. There's just, you got the Christopher Walken performance. It's Roger Moore's last Bond film. You got the blimp, uh, San Francisco, all this stuff, famous backdrops and stuff. Um, The Spy Who Loved Me, I put three. Uh, I think everybody has seen, pretty much has seen that film, though they might like get it mixed up with, is that the correct name for that film and whatnot? But it's a very famous Bond film. Um, Diamonds Are Forever, I put four. Um, I think that's another one where it's just, everybody's kind of seen, if you've seen the Bond films, like you've seen that film and everybody, the same, is it popular in lexicon? You know, it, it's transcended through the years. Everybody still kind of references, you know, just the name. It's the theme song was sampled. I don't know how many times by other artists too, as well. And then five, I put Octopussy just because that was, um, that was a big deal in, you know, when that came out, that was like a huge blockbuster hit for, you know, 1983, I think is when it came out. So, I mean, that was like the number one movie for, I don't know how many weeks. Um, that was like, a it was like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, Roger Moore was the right choice. Like, this is a great movie. This is, you know, we haven't seen anything like this. You know, they have, you know, the strong female characters in, in that movie too, as well. Um, so yeah, that's what I put for the, the five. So in your top five, you've got three Roger Moore films, a Daniel Craig film and a Connery film. Um, you mentioned earlier Brosnan is your favorite Bond actor. So what is your favorite Brosnan film? I think the best Brosnan film is probably The World Is Not Enough. I think GoldenEye is the most iconic, mainly because of the video game. Although that is an interesting premise that they did with having basically a another double O agent kind of go rogue, um, which I don't think they've really played with too, too much. Usually it's been like another double O agent got killed on a mission and then bonds kind of following up. But, um, I think, I think the world is not enough. The problem with the Brosnan films is the, some of the scripts are bad. Uh, there's just parts in there that are just really either over the top or just kind of don't really make too much sense. And then they don't really have great villains for him either. Um, I mean, you're looking at, there's no big name villain, um, really. I mean, Jonathan Price is in Tomorrow Never Dies and he is this over the top, uh, just media mogul. And and even kind of the premise of that whole movie doesn't make sense where it's the West, uh, whether it's America or uh, England is gonna go to war with China. And then he's going to be able to sell more newspapers. Now I know like the internet's not around at that time, um, you know, cause that's like 1998, I think, but you should go back and watch it. And you're like, wait, this guy was going to start world war three to sell more newspapers. Like, what are we doing? So it's kind of hard to, to look back on that. But, um, Brosnan's my favorite. I think he just embodies the character the best. The problem is that he had just terrible like scripts to work with and he just said the wrong era of being bond and if you take him and you put him in the connery movies or you put him in the craig movies or the Moore movies i think without a doubt people would be like that's the best bond ever and i don't think it would even be a discussion but he's just he's got the mid to late 90s slot and that's not the slot that you want when you look back at movies it was you know all these so a lot of action movies during that time period, CGI is just kind of coming into its own. It's the time period before really the world changes with the internet and cell phones and technology and all that stuff comes to the forefront of life. But it's this weird time capsule and it's just kind of awkward, even when you go back and watch some of the movies. So, uh, yeah. Moving on, let's talk Bond girls. So let's, let's have a top five. You mentioned a couple of them earlier, but um, let's flesh it out one to five. Yeah, okay. Um, so number one uh, would be Vespa Lind, uh, the beautiful Eva Green, just because it's, you know, massive tie to the Daniel Craig films. She was pretty much an element in all of those films um, that came, even came into No Time to Die at the end, you know, and he did miss her, you know, at that, that grave. It was quite sad. Um, but, you know, as well, Eva Green, what, a, what an incredible actress. Uh, number two, Solitaire. Um, obviously, Jane Seymour, gone into that, won't go into it again. Um, number three, controversial. Everyone's going to be annoyed at this. 
Christmas Jones. The, the beautiful, oh, she's just lovely. Um, and that's probably why I picked her, to be honest with you, because I can just see her in those little shorts um, and the vest top running around pretending to be a nuclear physicist. Um, but Denise Richards, crikey, she was lovely. I remember in, um, I don't know, you guys might have seen it, Wild Things, I don't know, you know, but it's, um, yeah, I think most people have seen that. Um, but yeah, she's, she was lovely. Not not great, yes, I'm not picking her because she was great. I'm picking her because she was hot. Um, number four uh, would be Paloma. Um, from No Time to Die, so Anna de Armis. Um, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to seeing her in Ballerina, the John Wick spin-off, because um, she's she's great actress. She really kicked some ass in that as well, whilst looking incredibly hot. Um, brilliant. Should have used her more in that film. Um, I actually preferred her character than Nomi uh, in the film. Um, I think you know, I'm, I won't go into it. I think Naomi was putting that for a reason. It wasn't really needed, to be honest with you. She could have been awesome, uh, but they really underused her. Um, and they kind of put a bit more focus on Paloma for what was probably 20 minutes scene. Uh, it was a bit odd. Uh, but she was great. Um, and then last one, uh, Tracy. Tracy Bond um, from Honor Majesties. Uh, the only wife of 007. Um, and that ending sucked in that film i remember watching that for the first time when i was young and that sucked because you did not see that coming at all um and she she was wonderful she was hard ass she was she beating up blofeld and she was you know she was fantastic uh, she probably actually deserves to be higher up I, I yeah yeah i put her at five she probably should have been at three i only picked christmas jones because she's hot um but yeah tracy bond fantastic number five yeah so when you think of Bond, one of the things I think of is the, the Bond theme. So do you, what are your top five Bond theme songs? So there has to be a theme song, I'm afraid. It can't be, you can't throw in Surrender in this one, Evan. <laughs> All right, well, if I can't throw that one in, then uh, I would, uh, I guess, obviously stick to Honor Majesty Secret Service. That's, that's my favorite, and that's the one that I listen to the most. Um, after that, Thunderball. Um, again, I love the sort of maximalism of Thunderball, the movie, um, and I think it's probably my favorite score. Um, but uh, yeah, I just love the sort of the booming voice in Thunderball. Um, the lyrics are very much on the nose, and it's, uh, you know, I like the sort of representation of Thunderball. Um, it could be talking about Blonde, it could be talking about Largo. Um, I like the sort of ambiguity with it, and I really do enjoy the sort of underwater theme. I think after that, uh, Duran Duran's will be to a kill. Uh, just such a good rock anthem um, and really befitting of the movie as well. Um, it's a very, you know, high pace action movie. It's it's so 80s and I just, I think it fits so well into that context. Um, four, probably Goldfinger. Um, again, like, like most other parts of the movie, Shirley Bassey is that iconic voice. Um, and just the orchestration is, is, again, larger than life with uh, loud horns. And I really, really enjoy that. Um, and then probably rounding it out, I would go with uh, Golden Eye from Tina Turner. Um, just, um, you know, kind of echoing, I would say, um, Shirley Bassey. I feel like she sort of has that same sort of, she's going for the same sort of, uh, you know, bombastic, um, you know, very loud theme. And I really, really like that. So moving on, what are your top five Bond villains? So these can be your, your main villain or any of the henchmen. I said Silva before because I think he's just so frightening and just fascinating at the same time. Uh, next, Jaws, actually. Um, so, Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker, right? Uh, he's he's just so much bigger than Roger Moore. And I think there's a great, like, sort of like Tom and Jerry sort of relationship there. Uh, so, like, kind of cartoonish and uh, it's fun, but there's still like this, like, this real, very real threat between it from Jaws. Where I think they try to imitate that Inspector with Dave Bautista, but I don't think it worked out as well um, because I think I don't think Dave Bautista is as big as the actor that plays Jaws. Um, but I, I I see you know the inspiration and everything there. Then after that, um, actually uh, Max Thorin in Mayday, like, Max is just so so evil and like willing to sacrifice Mayday, right at, at the very end and everything. Um, and he even like, you know, like even though him and Mayday kind of have a thing, he's happy using Mayday to distract Bond and to go and sleep with Bond, basically. Which, you know, I think that's, uh, 
very nefarious and almost like inhumane in a way because I feel like when as men you know um, when you're with a woman like I think there's a certain attachment and protectiveness there but clearly he only sees Mayday as a tool and so he doesn't even like treat her as, as, as a person in that sense uh, in many ways and Mayday is a really just really good villain like she's a good like opponent for Bond but at the very end you see a change of heart in her which I, I kind of like um, and then next would be Le Chiffre from uh, Casino Royale just because both in the book and in um, the film, actually maybe more so in the film, because Mads Mikkelsen is fantastic. There's just something again so uh, uh, I don't know what the, right, what the right word is here, but you know, like from, like frightening almost, right? With the blood and the eye and just the way he looks into thing, looks into you know Bond and how he can shake up Bond and play Bond too. I think he's fantastic, even though he's not maybe a physical match for Bond. And then lastly, Odd Job, right? Um, I, one of the first, I think, henchmen I ever saw, right? And he's so small yet so dangerous, and really gives Bond a run for his money, even up to the very, very end in Port Knox. So I think that's fantastic as well. I'm a big Odd Job fan, and uh, to your point around uh, Jaws, I actually met Richard Keel uh, about twenty odd years ago now, and he is a big, big man. I think he's a legit seven foot one if I remember him, but yeah, I, uh, I would have been maybe 16 or 17 at the time, and he came to, um, uh, like, a local event where they have, like, stalls and celebrities and such, and he was the celebrity on hand signing autographs. Uh, he was a, it was a, it was a nice guy, but the woman he was with, a kind of his assistant or whatever, she was kind of shooing people away if they were taking too long talking to him, so that kind of put a dampener on things, but he, he is a huge individual, that's for sure. Okay, next next up, I'm not going to make you do top five because there's only six to choose from. So I'm going to make you do a top six. Um, of the six Bond actors, how would you rank them one to six? Yeah, so Connery's number one, as we discussed. Uh, Craig is a very close second. Uh, number three is going to be Brosnan um, for reasons I think we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, he does have a personal connection there. Uh, but, you know, it's always been between Brosnan and Moore for that third spot. But at this point, I'd say Brosnan three, Moore number four, Dalton five, and Lazenby, who I don't think is all too bad. Uh, he's going to be my number six because he only did one. I agree. It's hard to place Lazenby higher than that or much higher than that because of doing the one film. You could argue maybe it's higher than Dalton because he only did two, but those two I think will be quite consistent in many people's um, favourite Bond list. So on the rating room we like to talk ratings, so I thought we could do some top fives if that's okay. So let's start with what would you say are the top five Bond films? So you mentioned Skyfall as your favourite, I'm guessing that's number one. Yeah. Um, one. What about the rest? Number two, I'd put From Russia With Love. Uh, number three... <sighs> um, it may be You Only Live Twice. Now, again, we had lots of gadgets with the volcano opening up and the rockets going through. and that. Um, but... Uh, Living Daylights with... Timothy Dalton. It's hard to say put them into five. Uh, offhand, I, will, I could say this, that and the other, but I'd get them wrong and I might miss a film out. Mm. Really, I need time to write a list out and then I could put them in a, in a permanent order. But well, let's, well, we've, got, we've got four. So we've, we've said Skyfall and we've got yeah. You Only Live Twice. From, from Russia, from with, Russia love, with Love, second. second. From You Only Live Twice, twice. maybe third. Maybe third, yeah. Living Daylights, you mentioned, as a, one yeah. of the Dalton films, of course. Yeah. Uh, um, any any other Conneries? Or, I mean, you mentioned Roger Moore earlier. Any of his films stand out or you're not really well, a fan of them? Well, uh, only uh, the, the first one, um, uh, Roger Moore, 1973... Live and let no 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 yep, it wasn't yeah, yeah. Live, live and let die that's it yeah. yeah that was a good one uh but what to me Roger Moore stayed a bit too long it got a bit creaky at the end yeah. uh but I would put maybe Doctor No which again was the first one uh so you had to compare it to the first yeah. one set the bar yeah. yeah 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 so so let's say as your unofficial top five Skyfall yeah from Russia with love yeah. Uh, you only live twice. Yeah, living, living daylights. daylights Doctor Dr. No. So yeah. it's a good list. I'm not going to sway your thinking, but what did you think of Goldfinger? 
Because for me, that it, was that was my favourite Connery film. Uh, but uh, it, what it was thought? good. But uh, uh, if I, top five, I'd put it top six. Okay, you know it's that's a, that's a good answer. So uh, moving on. Bond girls. So you oh, mentioned. Um, yeah. uh, well, uh, we, can you narrow it down to five? So uh, you mentioned Daniel, you, Dan, Daniela, Daniela Bianchi. Bianchi. So as uh, Tatiana Romanova, would you put her as number one? Because you mentioned Ursula Andress as well, or uh, a honey, a honey rider, of course, from. Well, Dr. yeah, uh, and also we're talking about Honey Rider or Ursula Andress in 1962, and uh, Daniel Bianchi in 63. And yes, they were beautiful then, but they are now in their 80s, if they're still alive. Uh, so anyway, those two... Well, let, let's go with as, as of at the time. <laughs> you know. uh, Blackman, I didn't rate her. I'm sorry. No. I didn't sort of... Yes, yeah, good actress, but not as a Bond girl. To me, a Bond girl has to have, you know, everything, you know. Um, I've got to go through... Get, oh, uh, um, it's hard to say top five. Those two I've mentioned, Danielle and, and Ursula. Um, it's, it's hard to say. I'd have to have a good think of top five. Most of them, uh, like Daniela Bianchi, beautiful, but soon forgotten. Honor Blackman was famous before she became a Bond girl. Ursula Andress was one of the few who became famous and stayed famous. Uh, it, it is hard to remember the leading ladies in Bond films. Uh, so, but they're all very good, and they all had the the sex appeal. Let me let me throw some names at you then, uh, not to sway you in any way, but just yeah. to kind of jog your memory a bit. So, from a Majesty's Secret, on a Majesty's Secret Service, there was of course Tracy, who married James Bond. Or Teresa oh, Di Vincenzo. Oh, yeah, Diana Rigg. Diana Rigg, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, now, you see, uh, my memory went. Diana Rigg, yeah. I'd put her in the top one. <laughs> <laughs> I go. mean, yeah, lovely. I mean, she had that uh, girly touch with a touch of sex appeal. Yeah, Diana Rigg, yeah. Um, just oh. going back through. So, obviously, you mentioned uh, Pussy Galore, played by Holland Blackman. Yeah. Uh, do you remember Jill and Tilly Masterson from the Goldfinger as well? Oh, yeah. The character was killed off, I think, yeah. Uh, yes, I believe you're yeah. right, yeah. One of the ones covered in gold paint. That's Oh, yeah, that was Shirley Eaton. Was it Shirley yeah. Eaton? Uh, you could be right there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, we're going back to the 60s, but Diana Rigg was in 69. Uh, yeah. yeah um, so I'm, I'm got, I'll flick through some of this. So Diamonds yeah. Are Forever, you've got uh, Plenty O'Toole. Tiffany Case. Oh, oh yeah, and um, uh, oh that girl in seventy one, Diamonds Are Forever. The uh, lit. No, no. Uh, you, you had Tiffany Case. You had plenty of tool. There was uh, Marie. Oh no. Uh, there was Bambi and Thumper as well. Yeah. Um, with a, with a, who was? Thumper. No, the, the lead girl in seventy one, Diamonds Are Forever. Uh, so the, so was, the, the character was Tiffany Case. Yes. Jill St. John. Jill St. John, yes. I can see her now. Yeah. I'd have to have a list and then I could remember them, how they looked, and then put it in a list. Yeah, well, but, yeah we, we may uh, we may go unofficially here again with the... Uh, but let's... I'll just... I'll go through some of my notes because it's good to remember as well. Um, so the man with the golden gun, you had... Um, uh, Maud Adams, of course, who was in Octopussy as well. She played uh, two different Bond girls. And also a cameo in A View to a Kill that was uncredited. So technically three different Bond girls. Uh, Triple X from The Spy Who Loved Me. Anya Amasova, the Russian spy, was, was one of the one of the Bond girls. Uh, Dr. Holly Goodhead from Moonraker. <laughs> was, that was her name. Uh, Moon, we, don't, we don't like to talk about Moonraker on the pod. It's uh, probably my least favourite. Oh. Uh, just moving up. Moving on into Alice, the next Octopussy, um, played by Maud Adams. Uh, a View to a Kill, you had Mayday, played by Grace Jones. Very, uh, oh, yeah. very yeah. aggressive. And also, she was a villain, technically, as yeah. well. Um, so but she saved Bond's life, didn't she? She did, in the end, yeah. yeah. Uh, Stacey Sutton was probably the main Bond girl of that piece. Uh, moving further along, as we get into the Dalton era, we've got uh, Pam Bouvier. 
Oh. And was in Licence to Kill. Yeah, and um, in a, a Pierce Brosnan film, who played, uh, was it Electra? Electra King, yes. Uh, played she... by... Uh, Electra King. Um, um, she was beautiful. Uh, let me find... Um, one one of the... Top. She was, she in was a... played by Sophie Mosso. Yeah, and she was in Braveheart. Yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and then when you get into the Craig era, uh, we have obviously in uh, Madeline, who uh, was his love interest in oh, uh, Spectre and, and No Time to Die, uh, played by Lee Sudo. Uh, and and that's uh, my apologies for my pronunciation there. Samantha. Oh, Samantha Bond. Uh, uh, played Money Penny. Oh. Uh, Samantha Bond played Money Penny in the Brosnan. That's films. it. Yeah, she, yes. she's. Uh, yeah. And, um, of course, in Die Another Day, Halle Berry. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. As well. So, lots to choose from. We've probably gone beyond the top five, but yeah, uh, yeah. We'll, um, we'll maybe, in the notes, put down an unofficial top five. So, let's um, let's again go from, from good to bad villains. So, you mentioned Blofeld. Yeah. Um, if we had to pick a top five, who else would, might be on that list? Um, Robert Carlyle played... Someone who'd got a bullet in his brain, Renard. Renard, yeah, in, uh, he was in the world is not enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sean Bean played uh, an agent with uh, James Bond, and they were blowing up a, a Russian plant or something. And um, Sean Bean, the character, was captured, and he was shot dead. But he came back. Uh, well, everybody thought he died. And I can't remember his name. So he was uh, 006, Alex Trevelyan, That's... or also known as Janus, uh, uh, which was the, the the Janus Syndicate, which he, he headed up. Yeah, yeah Sean being uh, a good actor, again, he can play uh, good baddies, if you can get my drift. Uh, yeah, uh, Robert Carlyle. Um, there were quite a few, but Bardem, uh, Xavier Bardem, is it? Foster? Xavier Bardem, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, to me, was a... A brilliant buddy, and as was Donald Pleasance, uh, they oozed badness. Good actors can play the part well, and and that's it. You know, for you've got to have a real good good buddy. Uh, uh, what about some of the henchmen? Would you include any? Oh, of the, the likes of Jaws or an odd job? Would you include odd, any of those? Odd job. I'm just going to say, odd job was a, a brilliant uh, henchman. Uh, yeah, he was he was brilliant with the the bull rat. Uh, Jaws. Uh, to me, it was a bit funny, you know. It, it, it's no, I, I don't sort of rate him as a real bad man because in the film he became a goody, yeah. uh, you know. In in the I think it was the second one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, in uh, Moonraker. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I put odd job there among the top five. Uh, Badam, I think uh, him and Donald Pleasance. Yeah, yeah. Top of the pile. That's the list. So let's do one more top five. Um, and that's on theme songs. So top of the list, I'm guessing, would be Matt Munro. Yeah, Matt Russia Munro. Love. To what? me, it appeals to me. Uh, from Russia with Love. Uh, it was part of the 60s. Uh, and everything about the 60s were great. I mean, the 60s to me was the Beatles, the Space Race, the Kennedys, and James Bond. Those were the swinging 60s. Uh, and the the songs, well, there was great music about it. And the James Bond songs, uh, Doctor No was very catchy. Uh, obviously, my favourite is From Russia With Love. And as we went on, there was Shirley Bassey uh, and Tom, Tom Jones. I think Tom Jones sang Thunderball. Well, I'm a fan of Tom Jones. Uh, the song was great and powerful. Shirley Bassey, Goldfinger, and something else she sang. Uh, she sang three ones three. on in total. Oh. She did uh, Goldfinger, she did Diamonds Are Forever, and Moonraker. Yeah, yeah. So si the singer has, appeals to me as well as the songs. You can have a good song and not a very good singer or, or group that you're not attracted to. Whereas you, if you get a, a good singer and a bad song, you know, it makes this. But yeah, they're, they're my top. Uh, from Russia with Love, Matt Monroe. It's to me, it's my number one. Uh, 
uh, and then a, a few more follow on. Uh, Adele and Skyfall, I liked it. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good list. So, uh, final thing from a from a rating, a ranking point of view. So we had six six men took the mantle of James Bond. Um, I'm guessing. So we, we talked about in terms of who's the top. You've got Daniel Craig yeah. as the top, uh, a, a hair above yeah, Sean, uh, Connery Sean Connery in second Connery, place. Yeah. Second, uh, I think Pierce Brosnan was so, a good actor. So Pierce Brosnan at so number three. I'd put him in third. Now, yeah. a lot of people wouldn't, but it would to me. And then I, I'd put uh, Timothy Dalton, although he only made two appearances. Uh, George Lazenby only made one appearance. And Roger Moore made the most appearance. I'd put him in the top six at number six. Nice bloke, entertainer, all that, but... For Bond, you've got to be a cold-blooded killer with a touch of sex appeal and you've got to be, have the face of a mean bastard and be cool, calm and collected. Daniel Craig was, and so was Sean Connery. Oh, that's a good list. Well, well, that's kind of the end of what I've got planned for this. Anything else you want to t mention about James Bond or your love of or memories of? Well, uh, uh, again, uh, you need a bit of time. Uh, uh, as you get older, you start to forget things. What's your name again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you forget things, but uh, happy memories. Uh, thanks to my son here, he's got me the whole James Bond set. And uh, I, I watch him now and again. And uh, it's the great, there's great memories from the 60s right up to present day. And I hope whoever gets the part of James Bond is a good enough actor to play him. That seems uh, a, a good thing to end on. So thank you for being on, on the podcast. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Post. It will uh, it will be coming via via carrier pigeon <laughs> any day now. If, if there's no carrier pigeon. I've got bird flu. <laughs> Oh, well, bangles me money. Uh, you know, you get what you pay for on this <laughs> podcast, that's for sure. <laughs> Kids. <laughs>